First Unitarian. First of all, I want to say thank you to Rachel, Carl, and Robin for saying yes when I asked them to say a few words about why they support the church. I want to begin my own comments with a parable. I don't know who wrote this. But once upon a time, there was a certain man that for many years did frequent the temple on the Sabbath day. And then, of a sudden, did he cease to be found in the great congregation. And a neighbor inquireth of him, saying, How is it that thou art no longer seen in the temple on the Sabbath day? Are you well? And the man did give answer. I like not the words that the preacher speaks, for she does not putteth an end to the questions that vex my mind nor does she provideth me with a sure salvation for my soul. Verily, nearly every Sabbath day, she leadeth us into deep waters and leave us there without means of rescue. Now, when this conversation was told to the preacher of the temple, she answered, saying, Perhaps he that remaineth away from the great congregation must need be reminded that the temple standeth here not to avoid deep waters, nor to provide life preservers, but rather to be a place wherein one learneth how to swim. <laughs> Friends, Here's what your church is up to. We are reaching out to everyone in the next couple of weeks, all our members and friends, to connect, to check in, to listen to what's on your mind, and to ask you to support First Unitarian Denver. If we know you, you're going to get an email asking for a conversation or a phone call, a Zoom call, whatever. That email will be coming from a volunteer, one of your many community members, so do they do give them the courtesy of responding. There's no obligation, no threats of damnation, just an opportunity to connect with another member of the community. And yes, they will be asking you for a financial pledge, but the primary purpose is to reach out, check in, and deepen our connections with each other and with the community as a whole. It's a good time to do this. We have all been socially isolated for almost a year. The world is changing around us, and this is the 150th anniversary of this congregation. First Unitarian was founded August 16th, 1871, five years before Colorado became a state. We've been doing love and good trouble for 150 years, and we're just getting started. You should know, if you don't, that First Unitarian Denver has been a leader in liberal religion and on the social justice issues in this city for as long as we've been here. From providing vocational training for women in the 19th century, to founding the first kindergarten in Colorado, to desegregation, anti-racism, and anti-war activism in the 20th century, the commitment continues with work on homelessness, mental health and addiction, full equality for LGBTIQ persons, economic justice, immigration justice, and peace. We were the first congregation in Colorado and the first Unitarian Universalist congregation anywhere to offer sanctuary to someone facing unjust deportation among many, many other firsts. There is a climate justice initiative in the works as I speak today. But beyond, or perhaps underpinning social justice. We do life-transforming religious programming for people of all ages. We have invested in religious exploration for children and youth, and we hired Aaron Kenworthy, one of the most talented religious educators I've ever known. We have invested in an outstanding music program led by Leah Davis for over 10 years now. We've made a commitment to help train the next generation of Unitarian Universalist ministers. We've provided forums and space for dozens of groups and nonprofits that no one else would host, and many of those have gone on to become seminal, thriving, inclusive initiatives in Denver. We change lives. 
in ways both measurable and incalculable, Denver is a better city for us being here. As so often in the past, right now, we are being called to faithfully respond to the world we live in. We live in times and in a nation that has largely forgotten, forsaken, or turned directly against the most core principles of this tradition and this community. What passes for religion out there is itself part of the problem. You know this. Most religion has largely adopted and adapted the same winner-take-all, divide-and-conquer, us-and-them, exploit-and-hoard theology, and it is a theology that creates and perpetuates white supremacy, environmental destruction, and the myth of individualism that got us all into this mess. It's the water we swim in. And that makes it pretty hard for us to see another way. But right here at First Unitarian Denver, I want us to be the church that breaks that mold, breaks it wide open. I'm kind of on fire with this idea so that the theology and the principles we embody in this world make a religion that first heals and second liberates. Comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable, binding and building up the covenants that are broken among us and within us, freeing us from the chains of cultural assumptions that are killing us and everything around us. Nothing could be more countercultural or more personally and communally salvific than this. And we know, at least in this tradition we know, that this religion I'm talking about can never be something that comes down from some authority or gets codified in some book or ossified in some scripture. But rather, that religion has to be a, has to be a living, breathing, evolving faith built on relationship and reciprocity, growing with us as our vision expands and our understanding deepens. And I believe if you are here, if you are part of this community, you have covenanted, that is, you aspire to be a steward of these principles. You understand that there is a give and a take, a reciprocity to life and community and companionship, the universe, everything, really. And because this is a sermon on stewardship, and I don't believe in beating around the bush, I am unabashedly asking you to support this institution that aspires to companion each other and the world to a more wholesome, more loving, more sustainable place. Again, when you receive your email, respond. Have a conversation with another member of this community. Ask the questions that you have to ask. Share your story. Make a new friend or deepen a connection that's already there. If anything's unclear, ask me. Ask Rhonda Williamson, our stewardship coordinator. Ask the stewardship council, a board member, any of our core staff. We're a friendly bunch, and we want you here. So in closing, I ask myself why I continue to support First Unitarian Denver, both professionally and financially. And I ended up with a list that reminded me of and reaffirmed in me many things. So my list goes something like this. It actually goes exactly like this. I support First Unitarian Denver because the news doesn't get to the heart of things. Because truths are deeper and more interconnected than they appear. Because we need each other, just like we need food and shelter, so that we might better protect the vulnerable, so that we have a community to give to and receive from, because it's an antidote to this culture that puts us all under enormous, unrelenting pressure to live lives of fantastic superficiality because most of us need a base camp from which to explore both the inner spiritual world and the outer political world. Because I believe in inclusion 
and diversity and overcoming the obstacles to inclusion. Because I love our people. Because it takes a village to do nearly anything worthwhile, maybe especially raising children. Because the values we preach and try to practice make sense. And they encourage healing. And they encourage liberation. And they just might save the damn world. Amen. <laughs>